Hi, I'm Max Chapman. We're in my studio here in Essex, and I'm going to run you through how I would make a simple groove in Ableton Live. Okie dokie, right, so I'm going to do this over about eight bars. I've got some samples here that I'm just going to have you, I've picked out and uh, I think go pretty well. So, first thing is that I always use, I, I use arrangement view and I always use MIDI channels, so I'll just get a few MIDI channels open. I just usually just drag my kick straight into to there, make sure it's armed, which it usually will be, which is here, this is the arm button, so this is, if you press record, it's going to start making your MIDI box. And then, uh, one thing I always do is make the note really small, so you can use the release to lengthen it, so let's just duplicate them across, which is Command D. And then when we go over here, you'll be able to tell that, how can I get that bar out of the way? Oh no, lift it up. You'll be able to use this release here and sort of get some length on it, and rather than making them really big and not having any play whatsoever. So we'll go about there. Um, and one thing people ask me a lot, which I'll start with straight away, is how to get your kicks a bit meatier, a bit beefier, and there's a really easy way. If you've got like a kick that's a bit dry, um, you open up a return track or a bust if you're in Logic or whatever, and just use the EQ uh, about on a low pass at about 100 hertz, and pull the fresh threshold down to about 25 minus 25 decibels and other than that you're pretty much all right you can pull you can possibly put the ratio up a little bit uh, to about five and whack the knee up the knee the, the bendier the knee more for the low end the, the the tighter the knee is more for high end so on the kick we'll, we'll go for high end and you'll just see when when you send it on, which is you've got the a and b here these are your sends on the return track and um, when you send it up you'll see there's a lot more punch in the kick and you can do that with any kick and it also doesn't affect the um it doesn't affect the the volume either whatsoever so it always comes out pretty clean so we'll, we'll put that about halfway just to get but that's what i do with every single one of my kicks uh as for a clap uh where's a clap i was going to use there same again, just drag it straight into a new MIDI track. Um, we just work a bar at a time, I suppose, and we can just, same again, really small notes. Duplicate them over to wherever you want them. Maybe get a little one at the end. Maybe maybe not right on the money there, give it a little bit of swing. I don't really use groove pulls, and I'll, you'll see that as, as I go through it, but I use maybe turn the velocity down on that one as well, so it's not as strong. And then again, you can use the release. And I use an EQ, I'm, I'm using the standard stuff here so that anyone that's using Ableton will be able to see what I'm doing. Um, I use an EQ on pretty much everything just to get the rubbish out. So there's obviously you can see there's a lot of bass in there, bass frequency in there. So we'll pull that out to about sort of 1K-ish halfway. Um, and just to thicken that up a bit, sometimes I, uh, I'll just duplicate the whole, so if you click on the whole track and highlight where it says what sample you've put in, Command and D will duplicate it. Uh, to consolidate everything is Command J, so you've got it all in one, one go. And then sometimes I'll just drop that down four, no, uh, four semitones. Let's just get this um, the right sort of volume. And you can hear that other clap's just sticking it up a bit. So 
So there's the cap. Then I would get a open hat in. So this, I'm going to use an open 909 for this. Same again, just do it over a over a bar or whatever. I do these pretty straight usually. Um, with a with my hat and clap, I never really use any uh, where where it, where the kick hits and where the open hat hits. I never really use any swing because I find it I find it can pull it out, especially when you're mixing. It's quite tough to mix. Again, I put the small notes in, and then you can use the release to have, get that as big as you want it. I think I'll probably pitch it down a couple. Uh, EQ on that, get it out to where, obviously wherever you want it to sound basically, this is no right, right or wrong, wrong way to do this. And then we'll put that down to about there. Um, we can probably just open on a return track, it's quite good to use your reverbs and stuff on a return because, I'll give you an example actually, if I'm on, if I'm on a on the actual track, if I'm sticking reverb on the actual track here, if I solo it, you'll see that when I put the dry wet up, you lose the, the you lose the attack on the sound. So if I was to cut and paste that that same reverb onto a return track and just turn the send up, which which can either be here or here, turn that send up, then you you don't lose the attack. So. A little bit of reverb in there, probably the same in the clap actually. That's about right. Then for a closed hat, I'm going to do a really simple one. Um, so nothing's too complicated. You, again, I'll just use a bar to show you there. So the I like to do the closed hat so that the swing is isn't on the um, isn't on the kick and the open hat. So I like it to be fairly straight on these notes here. As for the swing in the middle, I'll just pull. I mean, you can you can do. It, some people like to do it really late. Some people like to do it bang on. I just like to do it slightly off. So there's that little swing in there, and then duplicate that over so it's all the way. Um, you could put, if you wanted to, you can just highlight all of them. If, if you wanted it to be tighter, you could just highlight all of them, make them a little bit smaller. Might not make too much difference, it probably won't, to be honest. Um, pull them over. And then we got the release to, uh, to get to however, what length you want. I'd probably go over about there. And another little trick you can do is just so that we get that sound in uh, gelling with the open hat, you can just side chain that to the open hat. So if you just open up the compressor, these little triangles always open things. So if you fancy having a little explore, they'll always open. Um, and then we'll just choose, click the side chain button and we'll go to the open hat and you'll see on the threshold, this is where it's, the gain reduction will start. So if we go on here, you can hear that that really bounces, bounces through, and that will that will create like the bounce and the gel between the closed and the open. Probably got a little bit more than that. Uh, get an EQ on that again. About there. Quite nice, a little bit more open actually, a bit more release on it. Uh, close out where have we got that, 6 minus 16. About there roughly. Then I would probably use a, um, I'd probably get a shaker in there as well usually, so. I've got a little shaker here, um, and this, as you can see, once this is in, 
Oh, it's quite loud though, actually, sorry. Um, you can see that it's already over to the left. So if you ever get a sound that, that you want to put back through the middle, middle, if you go to audio effects, uh, I think it's utility, and then there's something called mono there. If you click that, that'll just send the shaker back through the middle. Um, and then what I do is group both hats Again, use some. I think sidechain is very important with grooves, so I'll probably get a, uh, a compressor on that shaker. Do exactly the same as we've done last time, but this time to the group. You probably won't see that come through because it's quite low. You probably just have to pull the threshold right down. I oh, know you can't solo it and do it, sorry. <clears throat> and that will, that will put the shaker behind those hats and let those hats come through. Of EQ on that as well. EQ is pretty good to be fair. We'll do it anyway. Okay, so that's your, that's pretty much your kick and clap and hats there. Okay, right, so usually I'd probably go with a snare or something here. So I've got a, it's a really good left wing Cody pack actually. It's got some really cool drum sounds in them. I've got a snare from there. Um, um, this time I'll probably do it live, so you can just arm the track, press record, find, that'll do me. Uh, if you want to consolidate that so you don't get all this rubbish, you just click the, click the box there, consolidate and that'll bring it over. Uh, that's pretty good. I, you, uh, like I said before, anything in between my hat, and, my open hat and clap, I like to swing. So this and that snare falls in there. So it's quite nice to have them quite late. So run that through again. Just keep it really simple. I know that sounds very samey, but you can introduce another snare that will bounce off of that. So. Get some EQ. EQ is very important on, on your snares because you can really, if I turn that kick off so you can hear it. I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll turn off, turn them shakers off for a minute. So with an EQ, you can really get like a tone out of the snare. Probably about there. And if you play with that, a lot of people put, will put a snare in and they'll think, oh, that's not right. Well, if it's not quite right, you can usually, nine times out of 10, you'll be able to use a, an EQ to sort of solve that problem. So we'll leave that about there. And like I said before, we'll get uh, another snare in there. I think I've used 606 here. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying this is what I would usually do all the time. It's, it's probably not, but I thought I'd use quite classic sounds that are pretty easy to to use. Um, and that is not in there either, but I've got that here. 606. Yeah, so I've got... That's pretty decent. Right, so... Actually, that was better. Right, okay. So, quantize is command and U. So that'll pull it over to that bang in the middle of the open hat and the clap. Uh, the open hat and the kick, sorry. And I just kind of pull it off a little bit. Sounds all right. Usually, I'm, I, if I've got two snares in there, I kind of match the volume of them both. Maybe pull one a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Um, again, we can play with the, the release on them. And that will probably do for them. You can, the snares again, you can group things by just, if you hold shift, 
click on both, that will highlight both of you and then you can right click and you can group them. So we can then add a bit, add, you, could, you could actually add the EQ on both of them, but it's probably not the best thing to do because you might want to change the EQ on each sound. But you can use the returns, like we've got that reverb on the return. So you can just, you can group both of them so they've got identical amounts of reverb. Okay, so that's the snares done. Okay, so snares are in place, so I'll turn those, um, turn that clothes hat back on. Maybe a bit more side chain on that actually, so it bounces off that hat a bit more. Get the shaper back on. Okay, so one thing I, I use a lot is a um, is an 808 rim. Um, I, you'll hear it in a lot of tracks. It just always seems to work, basically. So we'll chuck that in. You might just have to play around on the keyboard to find what note you're at. Right, okay, so we're going here. So actually, no, see, that's, that's, a, that's a common mistake I make a lot. So what, you, what I try to do is not clash with my other sounds. Now here you can see the rim shot is clashed with that snare, so it's probably not best to do that, but where it was situated was pretty good. So we can quantize that. That's pretty good actually, because this one's, again, this one's on an open hat, so we'll leave that where it is, and this one's not, it's in between. So we'll just put a tiny bit of swing manually there, and we can just move that to, say, there. Um, that should work. Consolidate that clip. Um, we'll probably just do it over two bars there. Sounds about right, a bit of reverb. Quite like a bit of reverb on a rim shot, it's quite nice, so quite a bit. Maybe a bit more than that. EQ on it. Get the low end rubbish out. And this here, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but this here is the volume, which is uh, essentially is exactly the same as this. So this is where I'm controlling the volume. Maybe a bit louder. Maybe pull that over to the right to give it a bit of space. Right, that's that in. Uh, another is also in the 808 pack, or in the 808 machine, is a clave, which I always think is quite nice for a bit of groove. Again, quite nice there. And I want to be putting this in that it's so where it's not going to clash with everything else that I've got. So uh, <clears throat> maybe go something like that. Yeah, about there. Again, that's that could have a little bit of swing there. I know it can't. Sorry, that's on a hat, so I'd leave that. Uh, and if you want to, well, that, that sounds quite in your face. That so you can uh, you can highlight all that and use the velocity, or you can make each each note a different velocity, which which can work with groove actually quite well. We can do that. Duplicate those over. Solo that so we can hear what we're doing. Bit of reverb. Again, EQ. Get all the rubbish out. And maybe pull that to the left because we've got the room on the right.
Okay, then I would, I mean, a lot of the time I would say that was done, I'm, as in for groove, but there's a, there's a few little things I like to do, and one of them is to find some sort of like background noise. Um, and sometimes it just, I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna work in this, um, but if you get something like this, Sometimes you can find little bits. Maybe something like that. Um, and we can just run that behind. So if we if we pull it open, we can just if you if you zoom in on the audio, you should be able to see some little markers and usually you can just pull those little We'll run the uh, track with it. You can just pull out these little markers so that they... So that they line up with whatever you've done. Again, use, ex even use the, the bits you're swinging. Uh, um, even in these little bits so that everything kind of matches up. Get an EQ on it. Pull that back up. Maybe get a bit of uh, side chain with a kick or something. Same way we done it last time. If you put, if you click on this little circle here and pull up and across, that will move the threshold and ratio at the same time, which makes things a bit easier. So you can hear that that's putting a bit of side chain on that. And you could even duplicate this whole thing and move it to the open hat. So it kind of moves in between all of it. And just turn it down. It doesn't sound very good there, but in the track it just gives it something extra. And it also stops people from nicking your drums as well. <laughs> because you'll recognise the bits, which happens quite a bit. Um, and another thing that I'd use to pick up the pace in the track, I'll turn that little, that was just a little tip for you, we won't use that in this. Um, is usually I'll just duplicate the hat and then I'll use a 909 ride, which is gonna match that hat anyway. Play with the the uh, release on it. Maybe play with the pitch a bit. And then that, I, I would use that in and out of the track. So halfway, say halfway through a couple of my breakdowns or whatever, I would just kind of, that would be rolling and to just pick the drums up a bit, I'd, I'd pull that ride in. Right. So one thing I get asked about a lot is my snare rolls that I use in my breakdowns. So the reason that I showed you this simple closed hat here is because that is pretty much the snare groove I would use in a build-up. So if I turn this, turn. If I tell you what, if we put a um, if we put a filter, just a high pass filter on the drums, it will give that feel that we're in a breakdown. So what you can do is new MIDI track. Um, I like to use a snare I like, which is a 909 snare, which I've got out of my TR8, but pretty much all these these sounds I've got out of my TR8 and just renamed. Um, now what you can do is copy by clicking on this little clip here. Command and C is copy. Bring it down to our new track. Command and V, which is paste in the track. And that is going to match exact, the exact groove that you've got. It's going to, the swing is going to be identical to that hat, which is going to obviously sound very natural into the, in the track. So, and also it's a very small note, so you can use the release to get that snare going. Now I'd usually have it around that there. Turn that down. Uh, get an EQ on it, solo that for a minute. Get an EQ 
you on there. Get the bass frequencies out. It doesn't sound, it probably won't sound very bad there, but I've forgotten to EQ many a time my snare, and you hear it in the club and it sounds awful, so make sure you definitely get that, them horrible low frequencies out of there. Maybe pick the other, the high end up a bit. And you can hear that it's, it's grooving pretty well in there. And I would, e I would either bring that in with a, uh, I'd either bring it in with a filter, like that, or I'd just simply get a compressor on it. And the reason I do this is because I'd use the volume. This here is a volume. I mean, you can use anything with volume on it, basically. But the reason for that is if you click here, anything you click on, you'll notice that the, uh, the automation will come up on the track. So if you just click there on that volume, you can literally just automate it for the volume to come in like that. And the reason I do it there rather than here, in this view, is because I want to be able to mix it down. And if you've automated it, you're not going to be able to. So that, uh, any automation that you use for volume, I, I would recommend using just any, it, I mean, it doesn't make any difference opening that compressor. It, it's, it hasn't changed the sound whatsoever. You can just use the volume on it. So yeah, that would basically be if I was to if I was to just duplicate all of that, get rid of that snare. And I'll kind of show you exactly what it's gonna do from scratch. So I'll go on the master channel so I can use this filter. What I'll do is find my rides which are there. Where are they? Oh they up there. No, where are we? Uh -oh. That's in there. So we'll bring those in there. And we'll basically, well, I'll show you, in fact, I'll show you how to automate this anyway. So if you if you open up that triangle in the master, um, that, will, that makes it bigger and makes you be able to see the automation. So if you click the on and off, you can see that the, the automation's moving on the track. So if we leave it off and just turn it on here, that's going to act as a little breakdown, basically. And if if you was wondering, that's it's as simple as that. That's all I use on my breakdowns, just an auto filter. It's as simple as that. So that is pretty much the end product of the of the drums. There's a little snare in there for the for the build up. I'll probably run that for about usually probably four bars before I bring the ride in. But you can see here and that ride kind of picks it up a bit. And essentially, that is, that is pretty much what I would do. That's, I'm, I'm, I think that's a pretty simple way to go about things, not making things too complicated, making sure that all your sounds are not clashing and that everything's bouncing off each other. And I think you're pretty much there. Thank you for joining me in my little tutorial, if you want to call it that. Um, I'd just like to put out there, actually, um, everything that you do isn't wrong. You can, nothing's right or wrong in this game. This is just, I, I probably don't know anything, anything more than the next person. So this was just to make things a little bit simpler for kind of the beginners and people that are trying to work towards getting things sounding a bit better. Um, this is a new studio for me as well, um, so I'm hoping the sound is okay. The mix was okay. So, yeah, um, thank you for joining me, and I hope it's helped, basically.